Hello bookworms! Today I'm going to be doing another news and stuff video. Today I have so much news to talk about, obviously because it's been a little while since my last upload again. By the way, if you have not yet seen my Harry Potter bookshelf tour, I'll leave a link to that down below. Um, and it's appropriate to say here because there's been a lot of Harry Potter news in the past couple of weeks, so I feel like this should be called news and stuff the one with all the Harry Potter things. Um, so here we go. First of all, the covers were released for the illustrated editions of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them for the US edition and for the UK edition. The UK edition is navy blue and it has an Akami on the cover and the US edition is red and it has a griffin on the cover. I personally cannot decide which one I like better. I think I might be leaning toward US, but I'm not 100% sure yet. And those are going to be released in October. Then we're also going to be getting two other Harry Potter books in October, and a lot of news sites have been incorrectly quoting this article and saying, we're getting two new Harry Potter books, which is so not the case. The story is not being continued in any way. We're just getting companion books for the Harry Potter exhibit. So that has been a little bit misleading, but it's still exciting to have books that are going to delve deeper into the Harry Potter world. The first one is called Harry Potter, A History of Magic, and it has a beautiful cover of Fox the Phoenix on the cover. And and the other one is called Harry Potter, A Journey Through a History of Magic. And both of these will be released on Friday, October 20th. Next, I'm going to show a couple of cover reveals. Um, so Erin Watt, the author of What's Real and more importantly, the Royals trilogy, is coming out with another book that's going to be part of the Royals series, but it is companion novels. And this book is going to follow Easton, who is the brother that I think everyone likes the most in that series. Um, the book is called Fallen Air, and we now have a cover for that. We also have a cover for Almost Midnight by Rainbow Rowell. We also got a cover for The Book of Dust by Philip Pullman. Um, I really, really like this illustrated cover. I think it's really pretty and it has that like old timey kind of fantasy art feel. Um, so I think it's really appealing. We also got a cover for The Sun and Her Flowers by Ruby Kaur. I recently read her first poetry collection and I really, really loved it. Um, and I really love the cover for this second collection even more. And I believe that this one also comes out in October. Then just a bit of like random book news. Um, so it's been announced that Victoria Schwab is going to be coming out with a new book in 2019. It is the one that she has been talking about on podcasts, at events at bookstores, and just online in general for the longest time. Um, I think this one is going to be like her, like, mind child because she has just been talking about how she's wanted to write this story for so long. The book is called The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. She's also referred to this as the devil book and it is actually a love story that takes place over 300 years between this French girl and the devil. Um, she sells her soul in order to live forever and in return the devil curses her so that she is forgotten by every single person that she meets. So it sounds like it's going to be very Victoria Schwab. Then there's also going to be a second book to The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. This one is going to be called The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy, which sounds incredible. I have not yet read The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, but I am like number two or something waiting for the book at my library. So I... I'm really excited to read it. I've heard nothing but good things about it. It's a historical fiction book with like a bit of a fantasy element and I believe that um, the second book is going to be narrated by Felicity who is the sister of one of the characters in the book and this book is slated to come out in 2018. Then there's some really fun audiobook narration news. David Tennant is going to be narrating the audiobook for Wizards of Once by Christina Cowell, who is the author of the How to Train Your Dragon series. So this is a different series that she wrote and the 10th Doctor is going to be narrating it. In addition, Tom Felton is also going to be narrating some of Roald Dahl's books. There's been some photos that have surfaced of him recording his audio and I believe his mom was even with him at the studio, which is super cute. Um, so if you are into Doctor Who or if you're into Harry Potter, those are two different um, audiobooks that you can look out for in the future. And also I just wanted to announce that at Novelly Yours, The Candle Company, one of the candle companies that I love so much, um, she has recently introduced jar candles. She had been offering tin candles, but I really love the look of jar candles like so much more. So I am just thrilled that Brittany has announced these. I think that they're so beautiful. I already ordered three of them, um, but I have many more on my wish list. They're so beautiful. I just love like the colors that she uses for the wax in her candles. The scents are always so perfect. And when you burn them, like, 
they just smell so good. So that's just something to check out if you're into bookish candles. Then some like random TV and movie news. Um, so I think everyone knows at this point, but there has been a trailer that's been released at San Diego Comic Con for Ready Player One, which is the adaptation of Ernest Cline's book. Um, Steven Spielberg is directing it. Everyone seems to really love the trailer. I liked the trailer, but I did think that it was kind of difficult to tell exactly what the movie's going to be about from the trailer. Um, it was full of Easter eggs, which was really, really cool. Um, the world was honestly a little bit like darker than I was expecting, but I'm really, really excited to see it. Cannot wait to see where it goes. Also at San Diego Comic-Con, the character posters for Star Wars The Last Jedi were released and they're gorgeous, especially the Leia poster. It's just like, oh, amazing. Also really exciting news is that the 13th Doctor has been announced and she is a woman. So that is like the most exciting news ever because we've never had a female Doctor before. Um, it's actually inspired Andrew and I to go back. We're rewatching the Doctor Who series so that we can be current because we kind of fell off um, in the Peter Capaldi years, but I definitely want to see what a female Doctor is going to do in her role. Oh, also so Famous in Love, if you had liked that show when it was on Freeform and also on Who Hulu. Um, it has finally been announced that it's been renewed for a second season, which is really exciting because it took so long for them to announce that it was like about time. Um, but I'm really happy that that will be coming back, especially because it left on such a big cliffhanger. So it would have been really unsatisfying to like have that ending and then that's it. Also, probably some of the most exciting news ever is that The Raven Cycle is being adapted for the Sci-Fi Channel, which is the channel that I wanted it to be on. Like I've always wanted a Raven Boys TV show, but I always Always thought that sci-fi would be one of the only channels that could really do it correctly, especially with how amazing of a job they did with the Magician series. Um, so I'm so happy. I cannot wait. I really hope that the series will get picked up. At least a pilot is going to be made. Um, and yeah, I just, I have such high hopes for it. I, I'm planning on rereading all of the Raven Cycle this October because they're just such atmospheric and like beautiful reads and I just love them. <laughs> In other news, Sarah Highland was actually cast on Shadowhunters and she's gonna be playing the Sealy Queen. I don't see her in that role. So I'm really interested to see what she does with it. I think that will be, that will be interesting. There's another adult sci-fi fantasy book called The Rook by Daniel O'Malley. And it's been announced that that book is going to be adapted for the Stars Network. And the adaptation is being handled by Stephanie Meyer's production company. That is a book that has been on my TBR for a little while. And I'm even more like excited to read it at this point um, and just to see the adaptation. Oh, duh, I didn't talk about um, how Jenny Hans To All the Boys I've Loved Before is getting adapted into a film. And I am the most excited because I love that series so much. Um, the cast has also been announced and they're like perfect. The girl that's playing Lara Jean looks so much like the girl on the cover, which I really, really love. Um, the girl that played Mona from Pretty Little Liars is actually going to play her older sister Margot, and their dad is going to be played by John Corbett, who was Aiden on Sex and the City. And Lana Condor is the name of the actress that's going to be playing Lara Jean. There have already been a couple of set photos that have surfaced, and because filming has already begun, I believe it's filming in Vancouver, um, and it just looks so good. It makes me so happy that this is going to be adapted. There's also a movie adaptation happening for the book Where'd You Go Bernadette, which is an adult fiction book, um, but the actress who played Spencer on Pretty Little Liars has just been cast in the adaptation. I know I keep saying everything is like the most exciting news, but then when I get to the next item on my list, I'm like, no, this is the most exciting news. So that's happening for this. There's been a Tolkien biopic in the works for quite some time, but there hasn't really been much that's been revealed about it or any progress that's been made on it. But now it's finally been announced that it seems like they're going to be going forward with it. And Nicholas Holt is actually in talks to play J.R.R. Tolkien himself, which I think is perfect. I love Nicholas Holt. He's the lead actor in Warm Bodies. He was, I believe he was Beast in the X-Men and he's just an all around like great actor. I particularly loved him from Skins on MTV. I'm really, really excited to see him as Tolkien. Also, in case you didn't know, A Cinderella Story is now on Netflix, which is the best movie ever because it has Hilary Duff and Chad Michael Murray. Oh yeah. And it's also been announced that a Sweet Valley High TV show is going to be coming to some network soon. And that's really exciting. I loved those books when I was really young. I read 
pretty much every single one of them. They were so crazy, like, looking back at what some of the story arcs are. I'm like, how did I read this and, like, just accept all of this stuff that was in here when I was younger? Um, they are just completely outlandish, completely fun. I always loved the Wakefield twins. I always wanted to be like Jessica and be in the Unicorn Club. Shocking, I know. But yeah, I'm really excited to see some new, like, life brought to them because I feel like it is a really fun series for young girls. Then I have a bit of news that is a little bit alarming in my opinion. Jack Thorne, who is one of the writers of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, has been hired to rewrite Star Wars number nine. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I fell in the camp of the people that enjoyed Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, but I don't think that it like is Harry Potter. Like I enjoyed it for what it was, um, but it's not in my opinion, like an extension of the series in any way. And I'm just concerned about what he's going to do with one of my other favorite franchises now. Um, so I don't know how I feel about that. And he's actually also working on the adaptation of um, Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials, uh, the television version for the BBC. Then I'm sure that you've all seen, but there are some new Harry Potter Funkos that are going to be released. Um, I'm really excited for this line because it has Luna with the lion head. It also has Professor Lupin. We are finally, finally, finally getting a Ginny Funko. Um, and then we have the original trio, each with items from the Prisoner of Azkaban. So Harry is holding the Marauder's Map, Hermione is holding a Time Turner, and Ron is holding Scabbers. Um, and then we're also getting a Funko for Peter Pettigrew, which is not cute. <laughs> also, the original cast of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is coming to New York to Broadway to put on the play there, and I could not be more excited about this. A bunch of my friends like made the trip all the way to London to see Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, and they loved it so much, and since then they've just been speculating about who could possibly fill these actors' shoes when they come to New York, um, and I'm so glad that nobody's going to have to, that it's the main seven characters that are going to be coming over, so I believe it's um, Harry, Ginny, Draco, Albus, Hermione, Ron, oh, and Scorpius, duh, <laughs> like, he was my favorite character and I can't remember his name. Um, so they're gonna be on Broadway in New York City, and it's gonna be the same kind of deal where you're gonna have to register in advance to get tickets. Um, registration opens on October 1st, and you can register between then and October 5th, and then tickets are gonna be going on sale on October 12th, um, and I believe the show will start in previews in March of 2018, and then its official debut is in uh, its official opening night is in April of 2018. Then I have some fandom news. Um, so from D23, we found out that there's going to be a Star Wars hotel opening at Disney World, and I need to stay there immediately. We also have very limited information, but there was a teaser released about how there's going to be a big event to do Christmas shopping in Hogsmeade this year. Um, I believe it's going to be taking place at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Orlando in California. Any Harry Potter place that has a Hogsmeade is where this event is going to be taking place. There's a really cool teaser image for it, but otherwise zero information so far. Pottery Barteen is also coming out with a line of Harry Potter decor. If you sign up with your email, you can preview like a couple of the things that are going to be released. It doesn't have an official release date, but it says that it's going to be coming out this fall, so I will keep you updated. There's also uh, something that's been released that's called Cards Against Muggles, and it is an NSFW version of like Cards Against Humanity, but it's all Harry Potter things. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Right now it's only available as a digital download, so you can purchase it online and then print out the cards yourself and play it with your friends. We're coming toward the end. Um, another thing that I just wanted to mention for anyone who likes anime at all, the artist of Your Name, which is like the movie that basically took the nation by storm, he drew um, like a Pokemon poster and it is just beautiful because his artwork is incredible. Um, so I'll just leave that there for you to admire. Oh, there's also a new roller coaster that's going to be coming to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. It's going to be located in Hogsmeade and it's coming in 2019. It's really exciting. They said that this roller coaster is going to like change the way that all roller coasters are viewed. It's going to be totally different. It's going to be interactive. You're going to have experiences with the characters and it's going to be um, a revolutionary form of storytelling. So that's a pretty big buildup. Um, I'm very excited about it. 
But unfortunately, this also does mean that the Dragon Challenge roller coaster is closing on September 19th of this year. So actually, if you're going to book that fest, that will be a good time to get in your last ride on that roller coaster before it closes down. And finally, the last bit of news that I have to talk about is that Cardcaptor Sakura is getting a new DVD and Blu-ray box that's coming in this December. I believe it's first coming to Japan and then it'll probably come to the United States a little bit later. Um, but the artwork for the cover is beautiful and it is the complete collection of Cardcaptor Sakura. Um, so that's just something to look out for for the holiday season. And this has been the longest news video ever. So thank you for sticking with me until the end. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon in a new video. Bye! Thank you.